Mike's back to comics and I'm back. This time, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, C2E2 drama over the weekend, about a specific store exclusive. If you're interested in hearing a little bit about that, stay tuned for that intro. Right. So uh, welcome back. So I got a, a guest with me today. We're going to talk a little bit about our just our opinions on what's been you know going on over the weekend. Um, so I got a good friend of mine. I got Steve here from Bird Family 54 Comics. What's up, dude? How you doing? Good. What's going on? Oh, Straight nothing on. much, man. Just enjoying the rays. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm sure you guys may have heard that there's been, you know, a specific store exclusive over the weekend at C2E2. It's been causing a lot of drama. Um, we're going to talk about it. So um, we had a few a few friends of ours that were at the con uh, over the weekend. And uh, Black Flag Comics, that's the company, right? Um, yes, did uh, a pretty cool exclusive uh, featuring Miles Morales. Um, it was an acetate cover, right? It was uh, actually the first appearance of Miles Morales. It's a reprint, a facsimile of uh, Ultimate Fallout 4, just with a variant cover done by Clayton Crane, who also actually did some interior art on the original yeah. back in yeah. 2011. Uh, they did a variant cover for it a year ago, uh, and then they re-released it with an acetate cover, um, like a USA acetate cover, yep. just for the con. Yeah, and it was, it was to help promote the, uh, the veterans. From what I'm, yep. what I took right out of it, yeah, and it was limited to uh, 750 copies. From what I take, and um, it was it's like 75, out, 75 bucks or something like that, 75 or 85, one of those. I think yes, right? it was 75 or 85 bucks. Uh, I'm sure you guys in the comments can confirm that because uh, we had a good, a few of our friends that went to the convention. They waited in line. And uh, they were able to get a couple, right? They got a couple of copies or one or two copies, I forget. Because they limited yeah. each person to two copies at most, right? Well, they did not limit people to, to only two copies. <laughs> but some of our friends were able to get a couple of copies. Uh, Chip Gittler got a few. Uh, Beckerman got a few. Um, I'm not so sure who else got some. But I know my buddy d Rock Comics, I've been friends with him. For three and a half years now like he went over there like an hour after the con started and they were already sold out that's see that's crazy yeah and i heard that there was a massive line and uh a lot of the people there were not able to get copies but um there's obviously a lot of controversy behind that because we heard that there were a ton of whatnot and i guess what they want to call influencers that were uh walking up to the line at black flag comics and they were asking for x amount of copies and black flag comics didn't care and they just gave them the copies and yeah i mean i'm sure i'm sure that dave is throwing up photos right now from some facebook posts and instagram posts and all of that but i mean so many people are confirming that these yeah. uh influencers I, I i'm not sure who but i think we can all guess as to who the few possibly would be um, are going up there and um, they're cutting the line and not just buying one or two. Like they're buying <laughs> several. Like I think there was one comment that said that someone bought like over a hundred copies while these other people have been waiting in line for like a long time. And they, I think they even had VIP passes and had to wait an hour. And there was a few people behind them that didn't get them because um the booth, uh, Black Flag Comics, allowed people to cut in line to get these books. Now, is that a what Black Flag issue? Is that a C2E2 issue? Or is that a whatnot issue? Because it sounds like it's almost all whatnot resellers. Yeah, it could be it could be a combination of all three. Um I I, I find it hard for a convention to be put as much as blame as the latter of the two because uh it's a convention. Yeah, you can have certain rules and stuff like that, but I don't think you can really limit or tell a, an exclusive there to, you know, say I'm going to limit you to like five copies or whatever. Sure. I think that's more on the actual vendor's responsibility more so than anything else to say, hey, it's a 750 
copy exclusive. We're going to limit you guys to say two copies each. If you want more then hey, I don't know what to tell you. Um, ask a friend or whatever, but we're not going to, we're not personally going to sell you more than two copies, but even I mean, from that you can get back in line. And how are they, how are they to know that, you know, this person bought more than that? Who knows? But the fact of the matter is it was a massive line. You're not going to be able to buy more than two copies if you waited in that line because it was a line right off the bat and a lot of these people got, you know, no copies. Now listen, uh, Black Flag Comics, they should know this. Um, they've done several road tours, like three or four years in a row now. Um, they know that the people are wanting to get there early to get the exclusives because they have road tour exclusives. They have books that are usually sold out that they have extra copies of um so they should know they should only get like a couple of copies yeah they should, know that they should be limiting people right? right um but maybe at the same time they're thinking well these are guaranteed sales so we don't have to hold on to them forever and if everyone knows like clean green covers don't right. lack like, they'll go to stop them at some point i i was first brought up on this um the the drama at c2e2 off of a facebook post in the morning because I'm, I'm part of one of the uh, speculation groups on Facebook. And I heard firsthand one of the females that were waiting in line. And she's the one that said it firsthand. She saw influencers from what she called it. Or, you know, popular people on YouTube, IG, whatever. Walk right up there and pick up X amount of copies. If they wanted 125 copies, they were going to get 125 copies. While well, she was waiting with her boyfriend in line and they are like, by the time they get up there, copies were sold out. So this is how, that's how I first heard about this whole situation. Yeah. And then it just like spiraled. It, it, it snowballed from there. Yeah. I mean, you sent me a picture of that. Jay did as well. Several other people were sharing it. Other yeah. people were posting about it as well. I kept seeing different posts about it on Facebook. And so on it's, it's, it's out there if you really want to. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's in every there. Facebook group, the Craniac so group. Um, Instagram, I mean, yeah, everyone sharing on Instagram. It's it's definitely out there. So it's like it's not like you know, if you're like looking for it, it's not like something we even have to post on the video because it's out there. It's it's readily available. But if you if you do want to see pictures, we can you can message us. We'll gladly share the pictures. But um, yeah, yeah, for sure. And we're not like at at the time of this recording. There's already been a couple of videos out there that have talked about the situation. I think Chip Gettler made a video already. I have not yet yeah. seen. I'm going to watch that after. Um, Two Brothers Comics is doing a live right now. This is Saturday night. Oh, they're doing a live? Okay. Cool. Doing, so this is Saturday, August 6th, and they're doing a live right now talking cool. about it. So um, you're, you're getting our opinions on the, on the matter. <laughs> yeah, um, so... We, we drop it, yeah. I mean, it, 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 there's one of two ways you can look at it. Like, are you going to be upset that they're not putting a limit on it, which I think that's a valid point? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to be upset that these same what not resellers are pumping and dumping these books at literally every single company. Yeah, yeah. So let's yeah, let's talk about that. every single company. And uh, granted they were not at Terrificon last weekend when I was there and I'm thankful that they didn't release a, like a big store exclusive that everybody was out there looking for or a store exclusive that you couldn't even get your hands on, which is often the case when we get these what not exclusives. Because I've talked about this extensively the uh inability to buy whatnot exclusives at cons because they do not sell you uh, exclusives at the, at the booth, even though they have them there right up at, at your fingertips. And they were like, we only give them away to whatnot sellers and you have to buy them on the app. So yeah, uh, and uh, they're not just do, like selling the whatnot exclusives either. They're, they're going up like, like this book that you like this book before. specifically. Yeah. Any, any um, exclusive at a con. They're yep. going up and grabbing stacks and stacks yep. and giving them to all these sellers to resell. So they're, they're like, they're changing the way people are doing exclusives and the way you buy them on the, on the, you know, on the secondary market. And it's, it's not good. It's not beneficial at all for the collector whatsoever, because in this instance, they were getting these copies for less than what you could buy while you were in line, because I was told that, that $75, $85 copy, I forget what it was, was being sold for 100 bucks on the, at the line. And the whatnot, people were getting it for cheaper. 
So, okay, so that book, um, one specific seller. Um, I'll, I'll leave it up to Dave to decide whether or not he wants to reveal that seller. He, uh, on his whatnot, he got one of those books yesterday, obviously, and was selling it today. A starting bid of one hundred dollars more than they were being sold for. Yeah, I, I, I don't have any problem saying it, uh, that was a uh, golden age guru, um, and he's done it many times before. He's not the only one. Uh, there was many, many other whatnot sellers doing the same exact thing. He did it differently. He started a pre bid of one eighty five, which is fine. It's his, it's his book. It's his channel. He can start off at whatever he wants, but. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just ridiculous. And there's more whatnot sellers doing the same thing tonight going live. You know, some of them were selling it for a dollar starting bid. Obviously, it's more risky doing it that way, but the books were selling for what over two hundred dollars a pop. And you know, I did see some were selling for one sixty, one fifty, but that was far and few in between. They were well over two hundred dollars a piece for a book that they were spending eighty five bucks on, supposedly. So let me say this before I say anything else. Uh, I have been watching Comic Tom for several years now. Um, I think he has a great YouTube channel. I've messaged yeah. him many times. Sure. He's always been super nice to me. Um, people can have their own um, comments about him. Um, I've always enjoyed his content. Um, and Golden Edge Guru has been on there, and I, I've liked having him on there. I, I mean, them together is great. I love watching their videos. Yeah, I, I don't have any issues with that. I think they're great. I have no but. issues with them, with them. But what I do have an issue with, it, it just feels like this is hurting the community at large when people are going in and they are basically lining their pockets yep. with money to scalp people because in a couple months, these books are not going to be $200, $300 books, right? right. They're, and buying, I they're, they're buying... So many before anyone else can even get one at cover right. price, and then they're selling for double, triple, whatever. Yeah, and they got a perfect example on on uh, his. It just happened to be his channel as well. Um, he also sold one of the Invincibles, the Homelander, Tyler Kirkham. I, I don't. I forget if that was one of the whatnot exclusives or, or what the case was. But that book sold for seventy bucks today. That was that Virgin variant with the blood splatter and. Yeah. Um, that book was easily selling for over $250, $300 just a couple months ago when it came out. So these right. books don't have any, you know, staying power, uh, yeah. you know, for what they are. So that's why it's like, we want to bring out this awareness that this is going on because if you're going to be the one that's chasing these books when they first come out that weekend, because there's little availability, you're going to get screwed over and paying two, three times what the, you know, the price was as if you waited you know, months later. So my good friend, Alan Rue, um, comic Viking made a good comment about this. What if you are a veteran and you saw this cover and you're like, Oh, I want to go and get this cover. I'm showing up right when they open and I'm going to go get in line because I know if I don't get in line, I'm not going to be able to get one. And you're waiting in line for an hour plus And you get up there finally at the front and they say, sorry, we're sold out. And it's because of people that are going in and grabbing stacks and, and being allowed to buy stacks of these books. Yeah, that's that's what I feel bad for. Exactly. Because the book was made for veterans. And, uh, you know, to see that if, if there were veterans in line, which I'm sure there were, you know, um, and they just weren't able to get a book. And that's 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 pretty sad and, and messed up for these, you know for these few people out there who are just buying all these copies or who are allowed to buy all these copies and then just flip them for X amount of profit while these guys miss out. It's just a damn shame. It is. It is. And, um, and I know some people did wait in line to get their copies that they were mm -hmm. selling. Or whatnot. I know Andy uh, posted that he was actually in line to get his few copies. Um, but I, I don't know who else of the sellers that were selling theirs. Um, my understanding is that a lot of those, like the people said on the, on the Facebook groups, they were just allowed because of who they are right. to just break line and buy however many copies they want. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. And, uh, a lot of that, like I said, goes back to black flag for allowing this to happen, but these people shouldn't also, you know, 
getting any any additional privilege because of who who they may be, you know, to get and you know a store exclusive so they can make more money off of it. It's just you know, and this continues to happen. This has been going on all year. This has been going oh, yeah. on all year with all the major you know conventions. So any future conventions that are coming up right around the corner, look out, especially if that you know there's a really good exclusive. And uh, there may be whatnot there. Expect to see more of the same. You know, I know New York Comic Con's right around the corner. Mm -hmm. And they're all going to be there. They're I mean, all going to be there. there. I guarantee it. You know, mm -hmm. whatnot will be there. Um, expect a lot more of the same. So this is kind of like an, uh, you know, just an awareness of what's happening if you're not aware of what's been going on these last few months. Yeah. And I mean, they did it at Dallas Fan Expo. Yeah. Um, they did it at basically every big con. Every year. big con, you know, that's been going. Luckily, they didn't do it at Terrific Con because it's not as big of a con. Um, <laughs> Luckily, they didn't do it at, at uh, Planet Comic Con because that's not as big of a one either. Yeah. So we, we both got lucky there. But the big ones, like I said, C2E2, New York Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, Dallas Fan X, you know, it's all been, been ongoing. And There's uh, just a lot of issues that I feel like need to be addressed. Um, from the whatnot perspective mm -hmm. and the Comic Con perspective, um, and I feel like just the the retailers need to do a better job um, of all that because I've dealt with Black Flag before and they've always been super nice to me in person. Yeah, I, I, I have never personally dealt with them. I, I have I've met them many times and they are fantastic people. That's cool. um, and so th this is a little surprising to me, but. I don't know what, you know, what people have worked out. I don't know. I mean, I no. wasn't there, but I can tell you that. Yeah, that yeah, exactly. We're saying it from this perspective that we weren't there. We're only getting the information from what we have from people that were there. And everyone is pissed. And it, it's yeah. a bad look. There's a lot of people pissed. It, it's a bad look for the community. It's a really, yeah. really, really bad look for the community. Yeah. You know, but, uh, that's really it, you know, pretty much in a nutshell. So, uh, you know, buyer beware. Um, it's unfortunate. Hopefully, uh, Black Flag Comics has something to say about this. I know they just posted something on IG tonight. Um, I'm, I know a few people on there were pretty pissed about just reading the comments. So maybe yeah. they get a response out of it. Um, and just obviously buyer beware in the future that this does happen at conventions. So just something to look out for. Yeah, and I mean, if you really want that book, the, the best way to, to make sure you get it, I guess, is to get there before the scalpers get there. Get there or early. Just, and if you can't get there early, talk to somebody who can. And then, or wait a couple months when that book. Yep, exactly. Dumps down like they have. Been. These books have been keeping value, not at least yeah. thus far. You know, yeah. maybe this one does because it's a Clayton Crane exclusive and Clayton Crane historically does well but from yes. what i've seen this year none of them have really held value yeah it, it it's it's just frustrating all around and i mean even one of the um higher ups at whatnot even said I'll, i'm not going to read you the whole thing of what he said but he said um uh it does suck for the community at large is what one of the higher ups at what oh well, that's that's good to hear. But he but he also kind of denied them. He kind of denied the whole thing before that. I'm not going to say anything else. It, it's a comment that got deleted. <laughs> so take that for what it's worth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. But they they did, they basically denied it, but they'd also said at the same time it's it does suck for the community at large. So. Hmm. Yeah, because that, that's what it hurt, that's what it comes down to. It just hurts the collector. It hurts the community. It, it brings just a lot of negativity to the community that, that we don't need. You know, it's it's a very close knit community to begin with. So when and something like this happens, it, it gets spread out real fast. And like like I said, like this happened just yesterday. <laughs> We're talking about it. Yeah, I mean, and and this is probably the biggest black eye um, that there's been for whatnot. Yeah. Since they started selling, yeah, in my opinion, okay. at least for comic books. So yeah, at least from yeah the comic book uh, yeah sector yeah because they they do have a lot of different you know sections. But yeah, yeah. all right. 
So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you did, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Comment down below your thoughts. If you heard anything about this, what you, you know, what you, you know, what you think about the whole situation. Uh, but until next time, thanks, Steve, for joining in the uh, conversation, getting your opinion about the, uh, the C2E2 drama over the weekend. And uh, until next time, Mark's Back to Comics. Out.